Yes, yes, Massive and Crew back once again with another video and today I am going to fit my S3000 LCD and also my uh, HXC emulator which I'm finally getting around to doing now. It's 9.14pm, I've got a live stream at 10.30, hopefully I can get this done. I've got my retro illumination kit here, which is the screen and I've also got my HXC emulator apparently configured for Akai comes with a USB stick on the front and some screws at the back. So, without further ado, let's get into it. First thing I've got to do is get my Akai over here. Okay, next, we've got to, first thing we've got to, do, what we've got to do is remove the screws here. There's one, two, uh, three, four, and I believe there's a couple of screws at the back. Let's have a quick look at that. Yep, oh, there's one missing there already. So I'm going to do that now, there's a radiator on behind there, so I better be careful. I haven't uh, actually opened these ones and done the screen before. So here we go guys, I'm going to take the screen apart, take all the front off, remove the top part of the case. Okay guys, time to remove the screws. So for this I'm just going to use a standard Phillips screwdriver. So remember when you take the screws off, yeah, remember to put them in a little container or something so you don't lose them. So I'm just removing the screws. I believe on the H HXC emulator there's some jumpers that you've got to uh, set depending on what your machine is. I will check that up with the person but that you're buying it from beforehand. Right, so let me just get this off. There we go, covers off, lovely. Okay, so we're in. If you look here we've got one, two, three screws here and I believe there's some screws on the bottom. This is the floppy drive which we're going to have to take out. Somehow we're going to have to get to that, we've got a bit of tape there more likely have to remove and it's handy for me to keep this um, spare, as a spare one for my uh, other Akai floppy drive for when that goes down. Right guys, so let's get on with it. Screws out on this one, so here we go. Ah, also forgot to mention guys, uh, before you do that there are some, some uh, knobs on the front, you've got to pull these off. They pull straight out and your display one even comes out on this one, which it didn't previously on the S3200, I believe. So I plop that down there. I'm going to keep all this stuff together. Okay, got an old floppy drive box here. I'm just going to chuck it in there for now. All my bits and pieces go in there. Bam. There we go. Okay, so that's it. Get that one off. And as you can see, look, I've taken off all of the knobs on the front check mine, all right here you go, pop that there, unscrew one, three screws on the bottom, one, two, three, yeah? Okay, they're off, in the box, that should just slot off, hopefully, oh there's one more, Bam. Lovely, came off sweet. Okay, so I can see the old screen there now, the old bad boy. Right, now let me get my retro illumination instructions and blah, blah, blah out. I haven't even read it yet. Big up retro illumination for this screen, mate. Sweet ass, Matt over there sent me my screen. Okay, so now I've got spare screen because I actually lost one of my screens. Uh, and I'm going to be sending that to Paul Rayner, hopefully. Uh, okay, so, looking here, I'll have a quick peek. Some instructions real quick. Right, I think this panel comes out. Okay, folks, so this is the front, as you can see, with the old LCD there. There's four screws here. So, I guess I've got to take these four screws out, and then this panel should slot out. And I've got to see where the power goes to. Shit, I just snapped something, hold on. Okay guys, word of warning, these buttons are quite delicate, yeah? So be careful, don't snap them. Lucky for me that one didn't break. Right, so I've got to be careful, I'm holding the camera as well, so it's not making it easy. Right, so I'm going to take these screws off. Okay guys, so I've got the four screws out, now Got to see what's going on around the back here. Okay, so, okay, there's two wires going to there. 
and there's a plug here so I'm going to remove this plug somehow this is hard okay some little pullback thing there ah, there you go that was easy right so that came out okay so now I'm going to get my little clippers and I'm going to disconnect this just cut this here so I'm going to get snippers like this mm -hmm. and I'm going to chop this ribbon cable holding all this together because that's just giving me a bit more slack to get this out here okay guys so from what I read from the manual uh, you are supposed to trace your uh, backlight all the way all the wires from your backlight all the way back to the board now as you can see there there's a couple of pins here now apparently you unplug these pins and you'll see two holes there now your new back your new retro illumination light should just plug in here and apparently the polarity is the same it doesn't matter you can't plug it the wrong, wrong way around any way which fits perfect is fine but before you do that you're going to have to thread your wires through so what you can do if you really want to uh, once you're happy that this works uh, you you can you can disconnect this, this these wires here yeah and then you because you won't be needing them anymore so what you do now so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to literally trace back where this went through I'm going to pull that through there. I'm going to get my, my old backlight. Now, looking at the backlight, now, I'm going to soon find out, but I believe this is the back of the backlight, and the brighter side is going to be your screen, your screen light, the actual screen light. Plug that in there, right? That looks like it fits nicely. I'm going to leave these wires dangling for a second on the screen. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to get a power cable and plug this in and see what happens. So, people, so just a safety precaution, just for the purpose of this video, obviously I plugged it in just to make sure I did everything by the book. I've got this here plugged in. Now please be careful, don't touch anything inside when you, once you plug in your mains. You know, I'm not responsible if you're flipping, get shock or blow yourself up, yeah? So here's a power switch. I'm gonna switch that on there. And there you have it, you could see the uh, the screen is on the bright side so if you if you turn off the light as you can see I've turned off the light and it's quite bright still yeah so that's looking like a lightsaber okay guys so now for the next the next experiment what we're going to just test I just want to test to make sure this actual cable here is responsible for powering of the computer part of the LCD now bloody hell how have I put I swear I put this on the right way around I swear that goes on there like that yeah it looks it I can see there's a little lip there right okay cool so I've done that yeah now just be careful you don't short anything out while I'm doing this now obviously I would need to do this but you guys wouldn't if you follow my instructions after I've done all the experimenting yeah so okay so if you look here I'm slotting the screen in this way like so yeah and I'm going to turn this on now. I'm holding it on the sides here and I'm going to turn it on to see, as you can see, that's powering up. Yes. And we can see everything looking good. Yeah. So the old LCD is in there and it's literally just sliding in out like that. Look how, look how, look how it looks. Can you see that? Are you getting that? That's mad, isn't it? Look at that, right? So that's all slight, that's all slid in. It's all good. So let's put this thing, uh, put all the screws back in, put it back together. As you can see, this is the display control for the brightness. So if you do install it and uh, um, and your screen over here is looking blue, yeah, and, and you, because a couple of guys have, have emailed me, say, busy, I've done it, but the screen's looking blue, is because you haven't got the LCD turned up here. Or, or possibly, or possibly uh, you haven't actually uh, put the screen in the right way around and this part here is not shining through Yeah, so right guys. I'm not gonna mess about this anymore because it is electronics at the end of the day And I don't want to damage anything I've had to set this up on a nice little table here, which has worked out for the for the better uh, I'm gonna slot this all all back in here now Let me stand up for this. I'll see what I'm doing because this is 
quite a delicate part of it. There you go. Lovely. It's all in. Right, so now I can then cut this. If you look around the back here now, I can then, there's some wires that left over here. I'm just going to snip those off because we don't need them anymore. Bosch. Bosch. And be done with it. You can desolder them and take them off like properly, but I'm just going to snip them, man. I think they're snippable. Boom. Keep things simple. Right, our new wires have got to go through there. Thread through out the way. New power. Pop that there. I'm going to put the four screws back in. Right, I'm going to screw this second one in gently because I'm not sure. It does hold the screen in yet, but I don't know. I don't want to cut through no wires. So I'm not going to overdo it on the tightening of that part. That was quite easy to do. Scale of 1 to 10, I'd say what? That was a, a 5, probably. It's not that hard. If, but again, I did do a BTEC in electronics. So, you know, I, I do know about electronic safety and stuff. I, I wouldn't recommend you do it if, you do, if you're not sure about electronics and stuff. Because there are some pretty, you know, it can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, I guess. There you have it peeps, my screen's all installed. You see the HXC emulator. Check out my next video where I'll show you how I install the HXC emulator into this bad boy. That's it for today's video. Take care, God bless, peace. I'm